Hey everybody, Red Mage here. Welcome back to the series where I go through different RPG products that I have and give them a quick flip through and review. In this one, I think we're going to be doing a little bit of a shorter video today. This is going to be sort of a Shadow Dark supplement roundup. I have been sent some supplements from various creators. I've found various things that I found interesting and uh, just wanted to go through. I think, you know, it might be interesting for those of us who are using Shadow Dark. Of course, these are obviously applicable beyond Shadow Dark itself if you're using another system. But um, I'm going to be going through six of them. Now, this is the last of them that I'm going to be covering. It's the Shadow Dome. Shadow Dome, I should say, Thunder Dome. <laughs> Shadow Dark supplement for generating your own random mega dungeon on the fly. It's kind of an interesting concept. It's 28 pages of tables, essentially. This was created, I think, by Kelsey uh, for a for Gary Khan, I think. Um, it's a free PDF, you can get it. I'm gonna come back to it, it's the longest of all of them. But I'm also gonna be going through the Shadow Dark uh, preview of Cursed Scroll 4, which is all of the sort of crawling, uh, I should say, overland travel rules and things like that. Um, I'm gonna be going through Carousing, Sages, and Crawler Wakes, which is all sort of very small p PDFs, but you can get them on DTRPG, they're from Nashcraft, who is a friend of the channel, um, someone that I know elsewhere on uh, on Discord and stuff like that. And he's been generous enough to send me these and ask me to take a look at them. And I think they're great. They're super fun. And I've been sitting on them for a while because, I don't know, I just haven't had a chance to put together a, a Shadow Dark specific um, supplement video until now. And then first, and, and maybe uh, most quickly, I wanted to cover the Guide to Shadow Dark Monster Statistics by Matt Dietrich. Um, this is essentially a, a very quick, I don't know, rule of thumb for converting monsters to Shadow Dark or for understanding monsters in Shadow Dark or for just basically like having a baseline for different level of monsters in Shadow Dark. Um, it's really, really good. It's very effective. Um, it's very short. It's very simple. And Shadow, one of the best things about Shadow Dark is how simple the monsters are and how applicable they are to any OSR system and vice versa. So I don't think this sort of document is, is needed in the sense of like, man, it's so confusing, you need a conversion document. But it's really nice to have. It's really nice to have. Oh, by the way, I'll put links below to where you can get all these. But this is just really, really nice. You just go through it, look at the level of monster you want, and you have a quick baseline of a, a AC, hit points, attacks, and the stats and their effect. And what it's really cool about their stats is that it's divided into median, low, and high. So what's their, what's their average gonna be? In this case, they level zero creatures, gonna have a minus two to everything. It's low stats, so things it's bad at are gonna be a minus four, and maybe it's thing it's really good at is gonna be a one, plus one. But if you go to a level 10 creature, right, then it's median is a plus two, the thing it's really bad at is a minus one, and it's thing it's really good at is a plus five. The DC of all of its effects are gonna be 15. It's gonna get three attacks, plus seven to hit each, and 2d8 damage on average for each of those attacks. It's going to probably have around 52 or 48 hit points. Its AC is going to be about 15. So you can go through and very quickly, just if you're like, okay, I, I want to create a monster for my party, level six. Okay, boom, there you go. But that's not the only thing the document has. It also has measuring stick monster stat modifiers. So it has the category of monster that you want to use. It has variants with perhaps different kinds of abilities that that might have, agile and tough monsters with then sample monsters examples and the, their particular stats that vary from the baseline. So you know exactly what these creatures are like. And then again, there are these variant keywords and uh, those are in Shadow Dark, but they're also here. So you can go to the end and just say, what, what is their keyword? Oh, higher dex, lower strength, and it relates to stats. So you can easily put a little keyword there and put it in. Now, these don't have anything like special abilities, special powers, that's up to you to develop. Right, the, the average damage that th these things are going to do is there. The DC of those things is, is, is there. So if you go back to the table and you want to like do a level 10 creature that has a, a spray attack, well, you know it's probably going to be a DC 15, say, dex check to survive, and everybody in the range will take 2d8 damage or something like that. Maybe, maybe you want to increase it. Maybe it's 4d8. Maybe it's 3d8. You can modify it. Obviously, up to you. But this is the baseline, and this is just such a great little thing to have. I'm going to keep this up. Whenever I'm creating monsters, I'm probably going to look at this. Rather than going through the Shadow Dark book and like, you know, saying, okay, what are the average level 10 creatures? Okay, here's one, here's another. Try to compare them. Just pick up this, and it's, it's really, really simple. So, highly recommend you guys keep this. If you're playing Shadow Dark, it's just a great little quick reference. I might even put this in my DM screen if you have an adjustable one. 
All right, the next, as I said, is gonna be the crawler wakes. This is essentially just another kind of, uh, it's another set of tables. Instead of doing, you know, standard, uh, and basically instead of doing standard carousing, if one of your, uh, if one of the characters dies, then you can have a wake for them. And uh, there's the wake event, how much you put into it, right? Uh, what you roll and what the bonus is to the roll. And then there's just the results. And some of them are really funny. So for example, if you roll a one, then you roll a three, then you roll again, right? So you roll a d4. Um, a necromancer summoned the corpse of the crawler to terrorize the townsfolk. He gained three XP and a necromancer enemy. Uh, drunken thieves guild members pickpocket your, during your proceedings, lose 5% of your total wealth. A child claims to be the crawler's long lost heir demanding the inheritance. So these are all things that could add to further adventures for the most part. Not all of them. <laughs> a gang of drunken goblins crashes the wake eating all the food, gain five XP and a goblin ally. I could see that going either way. But you just have a bunch of tables quickly of these things, and it's not a very big PDF, just a few pages, but really funny things that you can add into your system. Um, I think it's great. These are the sorts of supplements that I uh, I would encourage people to develop, you know, <laughs> just like, hey, it's, it's sort of a fun little thing to add in to your world. Um, so again, I'll put links below to where you can get it. Uh, the next one is Sages, which is a system for developing information. If you have a, a question about how the players are going to find out something in your world, you can have a system of, of getting more information about it. This is really what I might use for something more like a West Marches or a Hex Crawl, something where um, it's more procedural, right? Instead of having to role play it out, okay, well, we need to go to this guy and he's going to know this sort of thing, and you know as a DM what he knows. Rather, this is going to be more like, hey, we need to know about this Hex. Is there anything we can learn about it? And then you go into the... Um, into this document. And you have several pages of it, uh, different knowledge domains for the sages, and what the oracles might give you, or the, the sage might give you. Um, and that's it, just again, a few pages of that. But it's it's great, it's a little supplement that tells you, hey, here's a system for, for you know knowing specifically using die rolls what this particular oracle or this particular sage might know, and how he or she might help the party. That's cool. Again, all of these, these three documents are like that. They're just very simple, short, additions to the game that make your life a little bit easier. The same with the carousing here. You just get an expansion for carousing. Use the same rules for Shadow Dark. Roll a d8 plus the event's bonus, then roll a d4. So it's just an extra bunch of stuff to do for carousing. If you run out of your stuff, and the carousing tables in Shadow Dark are pretty small, right? You, you run through them pretty quick. So here's a whole bunch more. A whole bunch more things to add into your carousing which is great. I love carousing tables. One of my favorite things was the carousing table from, um, gosh, is it DCC? The Lankmar expansion? I think it's the DCC, one of the Lankmar books. There's a great carousing table in that. It's like a D100, and I used that to develop my own carousing table in one of my games. It was a D100 table, and I had, I think, like every, maybe every four, maybe no, maybe every two numbers was a different entry, so it was like 50 entries. And I had so much fun coming up with that carousing table. Man, I don't know what happened to that. It probably disappeared somewhere back in the day. But I, I, I love that. All right, so as I said, these are the last two are the biggest of all these supplements. This is the, the preview of Curse Scroll 4, which I don't know if you can get right now, but I'll put links below to, of course, the Arcane Library where you can find out you know, more information and, and kind of get put on a waiting list when this comes out. The first three Curse Scrolls were all awesome. I have no, no doubt the fourth one as a whole was going to be great too. But what we have so far is how to generate and how to do like overland travel. So we have hex generation with the features, the new hexes, and the danger levels. How to do that. Points of interest and a you know, non-complete table of contents so far. But you get the sense of what's going to be on there with the status, um, which I think is really, really cool. Right? Hidden is visible once the PCs spend one hex of travel to search. Obvious is visible whenever the hex is visible. Occupied, a single faction controls the location. Or contested, two or more factions vie for control of the location. Really cool, so you have hidden, empty, obvious, empty. Obvious, occupied, obvious, contested, hidden, occupied, hidden, contested. I think that's really cool. So you have three of each, um, hidden or obvious, and uh, yeah, whether it's empty, occupied, or contested. Then you have the actual point of interest, and you roll, right, 3d12. So it's gonna be a fortified dwelling and the feature will be a road to a new settlement, or it's going to be a haunted monster nest, and the feature will be a path to another location, or one of the many blank ones so far. You get hex crawling and what the rules are for that. What the, what's the method of entering the hexes? Um, what the terrain is, and what your encounter's chance might be. What's really interesting is, um, this seems like a really cool system, food and water, how, how that works. 
What I find really cool is um, the new system of point spending to enter a hex in the Dolmenwood system. I'm going to look into that more. Maybe at some point I'm going to compare the various methods of doing hex crawling, um, point crawling in different systems. I've thought about this before. And the new, now that the Dolmenwood system is out and they have their own system for doing this, I'm, I'm going to look at it and see how it works. And if it, if it seems like a better system for doing this sort of overland travel. I like the standard six mile hex moving in, you know, rolling as you enter into it. But uh, I wonder if that new, yeah, I wonder. We'll see. The tasks, now this is a really cool thing. This reminds me of uh, the One Ring, where every person, every PC has a task they can do during their journey. And you have forecast, the marching song, push, scout, or trailblaze. I might even add more, you know, I think, I think this is the sort of thing that you, you could expand to like 12 roles, and that way every PC has to pick. They don't get to just like, oh yeah, we are five of us, we always get to do the same things, you know. I think having more than enough, more than what the players can do, or things that you can double up on, would be a really, really good idea. I mean, maybe you could, maybe if a couple people do marching songs, something like that. Anyway, I think that's really cool. And here's the procedure. One, determine and share the weather. Two, determine and share the visible hexes and their danger levels. Which is interesting, you tell the danger level to the party of the hexes. Three, the GM rolls a d6 for each new visible hex on a one as a point of interest. If the point of interest is visible, the GM shares the information. Four, the PCs make task checks in order they choose. PCs choose a direction to travel and a number of hexes to move, they move accordingly. The GM checks for a random encounter in every other hex using the hex's danger level. Each time the PCs enter a hex, the GM repeats steps two through three, repeats steps four through eight until all hex travel is complete. When all hex travel is completed, go to camping on page 25. We don't have camping yet. This is points of interest on page 25 here, so <laughs> the pages aren't complete. Here's weather and how to determine weather, which is great because so far I've been just using a D6 in my own game and it starts at, you know, usually whatever the standard weather is and it gets better or worse depending on what I roll, but <laughs> um, it's very, very simple. If it's a harsh season, if it's a mild season, and camping rules, so rule way page 29 is where the camping rules are. Rest and campfire tasks and again there are tasks as you're camping batten down cook craft entertain firewood hunt keep watch and predict and then procedure how to do that fast traveling if you want to go quickly which i think is really cool how much tra rations to use up what's the chance of an encounter on that fast travel and then how to make hexes safe they must declare it generates a number of threats in the hex based on the danger level uh and then you have to go if this has a point of interest it's the first threat and then you have to see what those hexes are right you, have to, you actually have to go through and alleviate the hexes. Uh, and then here are threats that you could have. A hungry kidnapping beast, or a hopeless kidnapping goblinoid, <laughs> or a sadistic stealing insect. Ooh, that sounds horrifying. And there's two pages of threats so far, but none of them are really finished. And at the very end you have a treasure map that leads to, and a couple entries, well three entries so far. A legendary horde guarded by a druid with pet T-Rexes. That sounds like an adventure right there. So this looks like it's gonna be great. And of course, these are just the rules, uh, the supplement rules. There's always a whole, usually in each of the Cursed Scrolls, there's been a setting, there has been a, you know, a, a mini hex crawl, there have been creatures, there have been spells and, and other classes and things. So I think Cursed Scroll 4 is gonna be excellent. And right now the rules look great. So I highly recommend you guys check this out when it comes out. And then finally, we have the Thunder Dome, the Shadow Dome. Essentially, this is like, a, again, a procedural hex crawl generation for a random encounter, a random mega dungeon. Now, that might not sound like your bag of tea, <laughs> cup of tea, uh, might sound, sound like your bag, but it is really great because of all the tables. And there's just random, weird, gonzo things happening in these tables, and so pick this up. You can either use it as a ge generation for your mega dungeon, or you can simply use it as ideas uh, because it's great. So how to generate rooms and what kind of rooms you roll there. And then you have, you know, which page each is on. It is all hyperlinked, which is great. Super good. And then you have the crawling events and light mishaps. Um, you roll 2d20 on the crawling events table every round, including combat. So you could have another encounter show up during combat. That's why it's called the Shadow Dome, right? This is crazy. You get luck tokens, light mishaps, and encounters on a 1, a 10, or a 20. Uh, you roll two of them every round. So constantly rolling these two D10s and stuff is happening. And the light mishaps are a frog tries to grab light with its tongue. DC 12 dex check to keep hold on. Bog mist, strobe, or phantophobia. Um, that's great. Here you have your encounters. Distance, standard rules for the distance and the reaction rules there. You have a bunch of names, you have a bunch of monsters, and you have a bunch of things, the Gagaxian Grimoire. 
collection of miniature glass animals, six silver thimbles, lily pad hat, rusty bucket, the door, <laughs> a lost sock, and some locations. And that was just the, a few opening pages. Then you get the actual uh, introduction to this thing. Lake Geneva, Wisconsin, Legend was born. Now, 50 years later, we return to the home of Dungeons and Dragons. Um, so this is, yeah, I think this is Gary Khan. Um, yeah, Gary Khan 16 um, for the Shadow Dome Thunderdark. Uh, a glorious event held at Gary Khan 16. So here you go, the empty room table. D100 table for empty rooms. Hazards, generating your own random hazards and some of them are crazy. Musical notes dancing in the air. They stab your ears and they weaken you with hypnotic fascination. You could either roll once or roll three times. Same thing with traps. Roll once, roll three times. The, tr the trap could be a swarm of otherworldly flies. The trigger could be circle carved on the floor and the effect on da uh, damage or effect could be uh, torches blown or your l arm is petrified. Your chest is petrified. Here are a bunch of NPCs. You can do the ancestries on the left, the alignment in the middle, and the quality of that PC. NPC. Here's the monster mob. Uh, what kind of group of monster it is, what their weirdness one is, what their second weirdness is. So you have a uh, 2d6 mutated sting bats. Uh, their AC is plus two because they're all wearing top hats. And the evil theme music blasts when they enter the room. <laughs> So good. The solo monster, the hateful goose. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It says on the left, it says, if no stat block, just use bears, chul, or naga. Modify with weirdness effects. That's a good idea. That's a really good advice. So we have the hateful goose who tries to steal oil flasks, and he's willing to trade if caught, and he's telepathic. Here's your boss monster, the lavender megatoad, shiver winds, the night hag, rahat, the sand ooze. And his weirdness is he insists that it's actually a wizard who got stuck in a polymorph spell. Here's a bunch of treasure, D100 table for a random treasure, the essence of Mugdalblub. 1D4 doses become an ooze for D4 rounds. That's a great, great treasure. Gold gloves, black leather, but turn white when touching gold. Piercing flute, once per day, all who hear, DC 15 con or D6 damage. The sticky whip, whip up to near to grab any hand-sized object. The bottled scream, when opened, all who hear, DC 15 con or zero hit points. That's a banshee, that's awesome. D100 table for encounters. Statues that look eerily similar to the PC's faces frozen in terror. A desiccated, well-dressed corpse. Its bag is full of rock candy. A lost bandmate is looking to jam with a willing group. The lavender megatoad crashes down the passage. An odd dwarf says he's lost his marbles. One got 100 gold pieces for his return. New monsters. The boggle, the exploding toad, the crystalline giant crab, the frog folk, frog folk knight, the hateful goose, the mushy swarm. Vampire stingback, the viviant, vivianite corpse. The Jagged Crown. Six gemstone legs sprout from the Cabacans? Cabachins? I don't know that. Circling a crown that still sits upon the severed head of its previous owner. That's awesome. The Lavender Megatoad. Hmm. Bring out your dead. List the fallen of the Shadow Dome, Thunder Dark below. Yes, that's right. Write it in the scene. Do it. It will become truly your own. So if you actually print it out or get a physical copy, write them down in here. And then so role-playing games, huh? They've always been there for me. Brief note on the Shadow Dome. And then that little bit at the end. So, super cool little supplement. I highly recommend you guys check this one out. There's the Lavender Megatoad. Um, I recommend you guys check out all these if they sound interesting to you. Um, I think the three uh, Nashcraft ones are like 99 cents, but I think the others are all free, or the Curse Scroll will not be free. Um, I think the, this, the Shadow Dome Thunderdark is free, and the Guide to Shadow Dark Monster Statistics is also free. So I highly recommend you guys, again, download those at least, and then check out the, uh, the Nashcraft ones. I think they'll be fun. All right, guys, that's it for this video. Hope it's been interesting, and I'll see you all in another one.